Hey, are you physicist? Welcome to the next lesson in the Modern Physics playlist. And today, we are going to be talking about the range of exchange particles. Now, this is just like a little add-on that I'm doing to my previous lesson on the um, on the four fundamental forces of physics. And because I just felt that I didn't really provide um, a, 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 a good enough uh, explanation of the range of the particles. So in this lesson, I'll devote some time to that. All right, so we know that the particles that um, first of all, let's go through the particles. Um, firstly, we have the use green. We have the strong nuclear force, and um, and the and the particle that mediates the strong nuclear force um, is either the gluon or the pion. All right, now. The the next one is the weak force, and the particle that mediates this is the the W plus or minus boson and the Z neutral boson. Also, we have the electromagnetic force, which is reg which is mediated by the photon. Or remember, the word mediate just means it is controlled or the force is carried out by the particle. And lastly, the least known of all, but ironically the longest known force is the gravitational force, which is supposedly mediated by something known as the graviton, but we don't know yet. All right, so these are the f are the other particles that mediate these forces. Now, we um we talked about the range and all that. Um, we I talked about how it's because the photon was massless, it had infinite range, and I talked something about um Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. But I didn't really talk in terms of I didn't really carry out the calculations for you guys. Which if you guys are like me, I want to see the hard the hard math behind stuff like that. I don't want to, I don't want someone just telling me that to accept it as a fact. I want someone to show me how it's done how it's true and why it's true. So here I'll in this lesson I'll be trying to uh, show you how it's true. So the Heisenberg's uncertainty principle we all know there are two types. One is the this is the more the more famous one. Um, this is the more famous one. But the other one is this. Alright. Now the first one is um, the the relationship of momentum with position, but the second one, which is which is lesser known, is the re relationship between energy and time. And this second one is basically what um, governs the exchange of virtual particles. Remember, the exchange of particles; these particles are actually virtual. And what I do by virtual is that they aren't actually; they only exist for for a limited amount of time only. Uh, for the sole purpose of exchanging the forces, and the time that they, or the lifespan that the virtual particles are alive for, is determined by, you guessed it, this change in t. All right, so how do we actually calculate the the time, or the lifespan, which we actually can, and I'll try to show you right now. All right, so I'm going to use a lighter blue. Okay, so we know that e equals to mc squared. So let's utilize that. Let's put it into the equation. mc squared times change in t. Remember, we just substituted e equals mc squared. And it's greater than or equal to h bar over 2. All right. Now, let's solve for change in t. Change in t now would then be h bar over 2 mc squared. Alright, but this tells the time, but how about if you want to know the range? Okay, because remember how in the in the previous lesson I talk I didn't really talk about the lifespan as in time. I talked about the range because range is more is, is is we prefer to know about the range because it's more important. It gives us more information of the particle because like the gluon or the pion, why is it that it has such a limited range whereas the photon has infinite range? So let's solve for the range. And how can we do that? We know that um, range is basically just distance, and distance is velocity times time. And in this equation, we have time, and where's velocity? Well, right here. Velocity is right here. So let's bring it up. 
So we have C change in T is greater than or equal to H bar over 2MC. And now that we know that C change in T is just basically range, because velocity times time is just range, let's use, um, let's just put it in and just say R. Let's just say R. R is range. So sub C change in T for R. And we have the range of the particle is just equal to H bar over 2MC. And that's your equation. So let's see if it actually works. So let's plug it in some number. All right, so let's talk about um, the, the neutral pion. This basically is what um, mediates the strong nuclear force right here. So the pion has a mass of about, and the reason why one mass is because we want to sub, sub in for here. So, oops, this was intentional. The pion, let me just redo that. The pion, the neutral pion, because there are three, there are three types of pion, um, neutral, po uh, positive, and negative. But the neutral pion is what we're interested, interested in right now. It has a mass of 135.0 mega electron volt per speed of light squared. Or, that could be written as 2.41 times 10 to the negative 28 kilograms. Alright, so let's sub it in. So that means that the range must be about approximately h bar over 2 m, so 2.41 times 10 to the negative 28 uh, speed of light squared. And let's do that. That's, so h bar over 2, remember h bar is basically the same as h, as in Planck's constant, over 2 pi. Right? So we can have now h, which is 6.63 .6 times 10 to the negative 34. That's h over 2 pi. So over 2 pi times 2 times 2.41 times 10 to the negative 28 times, do I have enough space here? Yep. Times 3.00, I'm just going to round it off, 3.00 times 10 to the 8 squared. All right. And if I did my math correctly, because I did it beforehand, I didn't want to do it right now. Um, the range is about 0 0.73 times 10 to the negative 15 meters. So it's about, it's about in the range of a femtometer, a femtometer, that's it, which is about 10 to the negative 15 meters. And the, the diameter of a nucleus, diameter of a nucleus is approximately in the range of 10 to, of a femtometer. So this this makes sense, right? Because the gluon or the I mean the pion mediates the strong nuclear force which is a force that holds the nucleus together. So it makes sense that the range of the force carrier has to be approximately the range of the nucleus that, that it's in. And this is actually exactly what I just proved to you that the range of the pion is approximately the range of the nucleus, right? So there you go. Hopefully you guys um, have a greater understanding of how the range actually works. And actually from this, from this equation, we can tell why the range of a photon is unlimited because the photon has zero mass. So if we put in here um, to zero, see what happens oh wait i just realized a mistake why didn't you guys tell me before that there is no squared but don't worry in my actual um, calculations there um, i didn't put in the square in so don't worry it's the final number is actually right it's just that i messed up while i was teaching you guys <laughs> all right so there is no c, uh, c square there but anyway h bar over two zero c and because anything over zero is infinite so the range is infinite right there we go that's why the photon has unlimited range. So, there you guys go. Hopefully you guys uh, have a greater understanding of what's going on for the range. And I'll see you guys next time where I talk about the strong nuclear force, the weak force, the electromagnetic force, and gravitational force in more detail.